What testing should be done to confirm a smoldering multiple myeloma diagnosis? So if you're diagnosed with smoldering multiple myeloma, by definition, you should have had all the testing that had been done if you were diagnosed with active multiple myeloma, because we need to prove that you have multiple myeloma that is not hurting your body. So you should have had blood work, urine, you should have had a bone marrow biopsy, and you should have, you should have had imaging uh, of your bones. And it's not just uh, x-rays. Uh, the the x-ray is not, it takes, by the time you have something appear on x-ray, 40% of your bone has to be destroyed by a tumor or lesion. So that is a little too late. It's not sensitive enough. So if, you're, if you do have an x-ray and it's negative, then you have to have at least a whole, uh, an MRI, preferably a whole body MRI, but it could be an MRI of your entire spine and pelvis looking for hidden lesions because if you have at least two small lesions you should be treated as active multiple myeloma if that is negative then you potentially are a smoldering myeloma patient so you should have all that testing done to prove that you have smoldering multiple myeloma and not active multiple myeloma in terms of smoldering myeloma so smoldering myeloma is a tricky diagnosis we have very clear diagnostic pathways and diagnostic definitions for MGUS, M-G-U-S, monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain or undetermined significance, and active multiple myeloma, which often has what we call crab slim or slim crab criteria. And smoldering myeloma, by definition, is the absence of those two. So in brief, to say for sure that someone has smoldering myeloma, I have to be sure that they don't have MGUS. And then most importantly, they do not have active myeloma. The difference being, in real life, smoldering myeloma and active myeloma exist along a continuum. And some patients with smoldering myeloma will go on to get active myeloma. The question is, when do the benefits of treatment outweigh the risks? And traditionally speaking, that has been when there have been symptoms. For example, spots in the bones, bone pain, anemia causing fatigue, kidney damage. We've changed the continuum, this line before. So for example, someone who has spots on an MRI in the bone marrow, even if the bones, the bones that are outside the bone marrow are untouched, if the bone marrow itself shows any abnormal spots, we now call that active myeloma. If the ratio of kappa to lambda or lambda to kappa, which is the this, free this light chains that many of you have heard of, if that ratio is wildly off, over 100 to 1 in either direction, we call that active myeloma because we say, look, even if it's no crab, no kidney damage now, it may be happening soon that we should intervene. Similarly, if we do a bone marrow biopsy and more than 60% of the cells are plasma cells, meaning that the bone marrow itself is functioning at less than 40% capacity, if a normal bone, has, meaning the hip bone that's presumably unaffected, has 60% or more plasma cells, the odds are high that there's going to be a spot chewing from the bone marrow into the bone around it soon, and we choose to intervene. So with that prelude in mind, smoldering myeloma is by definition not MGUS. So the difference here would be, for example, if the M spike was more than three for US units, 3.0, or if there were more than 10% plasma cells, I would say, look, this is probably not MGUS. So it's a little bit more than I would expect in the bone marrow. So I would call that smoldering. The key question for me when I see someone with presumed smoldering myeloma, so either the M spike is over three, or they have something about their light chain ratio, something about their presentation makes me say, this patient probably has more than 10% bone marrow plasma cells and probably is smoldering myeloma and not MGUS. I do do a bone marrow biopsy to look. There are risk prediction tools that we can use. One is from the Mayo Group and one is from Iceland called iStop MM to help us say who doesn't have MGUS, who is smoldering myeloma. Once I get to that point, so they have smoldering myeloma, now what? The big question in my mind is how do I make sure that I do not have active myeloma? Some of the, the, the tests in my head are pretty easy. So the traditional CRAB criteria that many of you may have heard of are pretty straightforward. C is high blood calcium. If they have high blood calcium, we should talk, we should look. R is renal. So if they have any type of renal insufficiency or kidney damage or your, the creatinine is the word I'm looking for, it's off. The tests that we can use to figure out what's causing that is that myeloma versus not. If they are anemic, and I cannot figure out why, even if their hemoglobin or, or uh, hematocrit are low and on their so complete blood count, and I can't figure out why, that may be the active myeloma. And B, as alluded to, is bones. So if there are spots in the bones 
on a x-ray, on a CAT scan, on a PET CT, that is myeloma. Like no negotiating with that because that those bones, if, if, if something has chewed out of the bone marrow, the myeloma cells into the bone around them, that can fracture. And so we need to move very quickly on those particular patients. The other parts are a little bit more controversial, but I think they're very established as part of myeloma defining uh, criteria. So again, it's more than 50% plasma cells. If someone's gotten a bone marrow biopsy, I already know that answer. If the light chain ratio is more than 100 to 1 in either direction, even if they have no CRAB criteria, I call them active myeloma, that should be readily available. So the one last one that I say for the end, and this is the one that I think people sometimes forget to check, is an MRI. Remember, again, that a x-ray, an x-ray is not a very good test at all, but a CAT scan or a PET-CT scan can pick out the bones in very good detail. If something's chewing into the bones, the PET scan or a whole body CAT scan will identify that. An MRI can go a step further because it can look inside the bone marrow. It's actually not very good for the bones. It's good for the bone marrow that's inside every bone, including the hip bone, which is where bone marrow biopsies occur. So I would say if someone has smoldering myeloma, to be sure that they do not have an M in Crab Slim as a myeloma defining event, you need to do an MRI. Ideally, that should be an MRI of the bone marrow, also called a whole body MRI. Or if that's not possible, a lot of centers don't know how to do that. They don't have their radiologists who haven't been trained to, to put that into their protocols. An MRI of the skull, of the spine, and the hips is often sufficient. Some patients cannot get MRIs um, because of logistical issues or metal or claustrophobia. That's okay. You know, we can just keep a close eye on them and do serial imaging. But I would say that if someone can get an MRI to, to confirm the diagnosis of smoldering myeloma and not active myeloma, it's worth it.